My name is John Whitman Ray, and I'd like to talk to you this morning on the subject of body electronics, the science of bodily regeneration. First of all, I'd like to go into the history of this subject. And it begins back in the 1940s, when I had an older brother who was a chiropractic physician and a doctor of naturopathic medicine. And uh, he had the experience of being taught by an old Chinese fellow some of the different acupressure points that he learned to have control and effect over different parts of the body when applied properly. Like one point here and one point here, for example, would make the gallbladder drain. Uh, another point here, another point over here, taking two different parts of the body, and he'd have pain going out of the intestinal tract uh, and start the peristaltic action moving. So there's many different ways that you can begin to understand that different pressure points have certain reflex action on certain parts of the body. Now, this began in the late 1940s. And then into the 1950s, in 1951, I was presented with a very interesting book on iris diagnosis by Dr. Bernard Jensen. And I studied that material intently. And I first of all began to question uh, one thought, which was the color of the eye and the structures of the eye. Why were babies born with blue eyes, and then later on you'd watch them turn brown, and then you'd, they'd get all kinds of pigment spots in them and different structural changes in the, in the fiber structures of the iris of the eye? Why was this so? And was there any way of bringing the eye back from the brown eye back to the blue eye? Or correct the structures in the eye so that the structures would come back to its pristine, natural uh, beauty at the time of birth? And I didn't know quite what to do about all that, but I began questioning very sincerely and believing that there must be some sort of a way whereby these so-called genetic traits could be overcome and the different problems that a person had nutritionally could be overcome. I began working on this. Now, bottom line, this study of iris diagnosis continued on through the 1950s where I saw changes in the iris color of the eye. In the 60s, we got more changes in the color of the eye and structure changes. In the 70s, I made it a study of the um, sclera of the eye and began looking at this very intently. And then in the 1980s, I put together what they call iris sclera integrated diagnosis of which I'm the founder of this particular study. And herein, we use the, without getting into the diagnostic techniques, we use the iris of the eye as 50% of the eye, the eye being the window to the soul, and we use the sclera as the other 50% of the eye, and this, the two together, the sclera and the iris work hand in glove with each other to give a diagnostic tool that takes quite a bit of time, hour or two, to be able to determine exactly what we have to first of all do nutritionally, and then secondly, what we have to do with a flow sheet in body electronics, where we have a prioritized and sequential technique of using acupressure points in a certain definite manner to bring about the regeneration of the func and function of the body. Now this is very important. Now, the iris of the eye, and this is going to be a little disturbing to some of you who believe the iris of the eye does not change. In all cases where I have worked with black people, I have worked with Polynesian people, I have worked with Indian people, I have worked with Oriental people, I've worked with every shape and size of people all over the earth, and in all cases, over a period of time, as we release the different traumas from the physical body, the eye color changes in all cases gradually from dark chocolate brown to light brown to hazel and then eventually to blue. Now, 
this is an important thing to consider because I'm just reporting the news to you. But it does show that basically there is a oneness of all mankind. And if we contemplate that we all come from uh, an original position, so to speak, uh, uh, from an original race, that um, under the skin, so to speak, we're all the same. And this should do away with any form of racial bigotry, uh, conflict between cultures, uh, cultural belief systems and other types of um, bigotry, if I can use that expression, because basically we are all one. And body electronics, using the technique of iris sclera integrated diagnosis, has helped bring this to the point where we can be free of racial prejudice. This is one thing that we've been working on for some time.